Hello, queens. This is episode 27 with the beautiful, stunning, if you guys could see her right now, she's got pigtails on. And I said to her just before I was going to wear pigtails, Louisa Hayton, who is the owner or director, I would say, from Brandon. Well, you've got a brand and creative engine. And it, I'll start that again. You have a brand and creative agency called Kick and Co. Woman, this is like incredible. We're here to learn more about you, your journey more about leadership because this has been a huge, huge topic for all of us, right? How are you, babe? Oh, I'm so good. It's so great to be here, Tam. <laughs> I, um, we were just chatting before about, you know, healing and all the work that we've been doing. Um, this has been something you've been really big on, not just for yourself, but for your team too, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's It really is. It's the key to everything, isn't it? And um, what I've discovered through that whole process is the better I am, the better I can be for everyone around me. And um, the the impact is huge. It's like a lot of us um, want to be on the world stage to to make an impact, um, you know, just for the greater good for people. And what I realise is even if you're one person and you can impact like five people around you, that's sometimes all you have to do because then... What happens from there is they grow and then they impact five more people around them. So it's like this ripple effect that I've just become really aware of. I love that. And it's that word, it seems to be popping up for me a lot, the ripple effect, because I feel, as you said, like you can you can feel when people around you are going through a similar shift. And I know you've been doing a lot of work within yourself, right? I certainly have. Yeah been doing a lot of deep diving (laughs) I'd love to know more babe because um you know tell me more about where you have come from a lot of my listeners are beginning their journey in the business space coaches or wanting to step into the online space too and I think you know you have such a beautiful story to share yeah well look I mean from a business perspective and I mentioned this before, like uh, probably about 10 or 12 years ago, I worked um, for an advertising agency for, let's just say, a man that wasn't particularly evolved. And <laughs> the culture of the business was horrendous. And he made a comment one day that I overheard. He said, I know my clients hate me, but they need me. Yeah. And, and it, that was almost a moment a defining moment in my life and I actually thought that was quite quite sad probably true for him but sad and so from the day I started my business it has very much been around creating beautiful relationships and it was a long time before you know culture and heart-based businesses and values and that were discussed out loud I think that's quite a recent thing and I think it's wonderful that so many more businesses are so aware of this um and it's it's discussed um very openly and there's some incredible people um that can educate you around that there's a guy called Simon Sinek he he's just amazing he talks about leadership and and culture um and he's he's someone that I've followed and I've read a lot of books around it but I've been doing it for 10 years and what I've noticed is through the process is it's all down to me it's not about creating something because you want a great little culture in your business it comes down to yourself and doing the work and being really self-aware around what your limitations are, your limiting beliefs are, and then how to heal that. Like personal development is the key to everything in your life, whether it be, you know, business relationships, personal relationships, love relationships, whatever it is. Um, It's been the most valuable investment I've ever made. Interesting, because 
In the world of business, so many people think like the work has to be fixed based on strategy. And I spoke to Krista about this too. And, you know, we want to create a community. Oh, let's put in, you know, this, this system in place. Uh, let's, you know, take time away so that this person, you know, can have more freedom. But I feel, and this is where shifts are happening, you know, it's the work that starts within. Mm -hmm. And again, from what you said, the ripple effect is, is again, such a testament um, and you can always tell, I know in my work, even just with my clients, if I'm not vibrating good, I know then my clients are not vibrating, vibrating in you know, yes. a level, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, has a, it has a huge impact. I am, um, because I'm very, very passionate about like creativity and branding. It's only been something that I've been looking into, and this is me speaking truth, mm -hmm really in depth um, into not just my business, but for my clients. Mm -hmm. What do you think has either changed in the industry world for branding and creativity for businesses? Mm -hmm. Because I know that's what you do. Yes. Or has, it, has it always been the same and people are just like, you know, utilizing different ways and methods around it? No, I think there has been an enormous, enormous shift. Um, and I think, you know, what's happened over the last two years has actually triggered that shift to a point. And, you know, because there's so, so much online purchasing and, you know, how we run businesses, whatever the case may be. And we have had to learn to cut through all of the noise, how to differentiate our business, how to communicate um, our why, because a lot of people will buy from brands that that clearly speak to their customers, like they understand their customers, they understand what motivates them, they understand why they need certain things, and a lot of a lot of customers. And this is, um, I found some stats before, but a lot of customers will pay more for your product because they believe and trust in who you are. Mm -hmm. So it's not even about money. It's about them feeling something for you or for your brand. And that is how a lot of people are making decisions these days. So if you're not getting that right, then you, you're not going to succeed. It's as simple as that. People... Um, are buying differently like oh, sorry I love this I story. know that that's all right no that's fine and that's hugely what we're doing with our our like our clients now we're like you need to understand your why you need to understand your customers you've got to stop navel gazing it's not about you it is about understanding the behavior and the nuances and what motivates and and what needs or wants that you're actually fulfilling for them. Because if you understand that, then you communicate that and that's how you land with them. I'm reading this book, babe, and I need to find it because I always are. Oh, there it is. It's called Building a Story Brand. And it's very oh. everything you have just said um, in regards to branding and your business and whatnot. But I love what I think his name is Donald Miller. Let me just double check. Yeah. Yeah, Donald Miller, he talks a lot about like you placing the customer as the hero and you become the guide. Is mm -hmm. that very similar in, in regards to, you know, really creating the customer a, a journey and experience for them to feel something um, in the process of branding? Absolutely. If they don't feel anything, they won't buy from you. It's as simple as that. You have to make them feel something. You have to be able to, yeah, tell that story, communicate, understand who they are. Like, it is the key to anything. Like, you know, you and I could be selling identical products mm. and we, one of us is nailing the storytelling and fulfilling the needs and the wants and communicating that well, whereas the other one doesn't. And that that would be the difference. The differentiation isn't in the products anymore because we are just swamped with choice. It is now being able to different differentiate yourself in how you communicate and connect with your customer that's that's the key to success mm, this is yeah. turning me on <laughs> yeah oh it's so exciting I love it I really love it 
what type of clients do you have um, that you deal with on a day-to-day basis? And like, you know, from from a branding strategy as well, like what would be some, like the key things you would tell someone wanting to build their business, what to focus on in branding? Well, it has to be, I mean, there, there's a process. And, and when you talk about branding, a lot of people think of branding as, you know, a logo and some colours and, you know, here I am. That's not branding. Branding, it starts much further back than that. And it is a process. And, you know, the first thing is really understanding at a deep, deep level who your customer is and why you want to communicate with them and how your product is going to help them understand who your competition is look at how they're doing things um that they're the they're the two pillars where you start and then you've got to start building your own brand like from you know your values and understanding the brand personality and understanding what's unique about you and then how to communicate that if you're clear about your business its values, um, who you want to serve, they're the, they're the key things to start building a brand. Um, and then there's a whole lot of other sort of steps, you know, then once you've got that sort of information, you then would go on to your brand book, which is all you, you know, your colours, your fonts, your logos, your this, your that, there's all that sort of thing. And then, you know, it goes on from there. So you it's like your foundations, it's your building blocks, yeah. And that that work, that pre-work that you do is actually what informs everything that you do after that as far as your logos, your colours, where you advertise, the tone of voice you have, all of that sort of thing. So you can't start up here um, before you've done that work. And it's, it's hard to do for some companies because, you know, when you start ups, you have such a tiny amount of money and you've got to be really careful where you spend it. Well, all I can say is educate yourself because otherwise you're going to be going back and doing it again or your business is going to be defined in a direction that you're not happy with because you haven't set it from the ground up and you have to go back and do all that work and it'll cost you a lot of money. So I always, talk, again, I always talk about Jordan as an example because I've been helping and supporting him on a little bit of his branding and social media. Yeah. But as a perfect example, he started with the logo. Yeah. Us. Yes. yes. I actually think I did as well in the fitness space, looking back on it too. Um, and it's beautiful that you've brought up the values in the business and how you, how, you know, your why and your goals behind it. A lot of people don't understand this, and I don't know if this is something you explain to your clients. There's demographic, but then there's the psychographics, right? So how your your consumers are thinking and feeling about, or what, I guess the journey of what they will be going through to purchase your product, purchase your coaching, whether or whatever, like whatever it is. From a, and this is going back to Jordan, and again from the clients that I've recently started to work with, mm-hmm. fashion. Mm-hmm. How do you make someone feel? How do you make someone feel with clothes? Yeah, it's it's like I think we touched on it before. It's in the storytelling, isn't it? Yeah. So I think, you know, you've got to understand who your key customer is and understand their behavior and understand as much as you can at a granular level about. <clears throat> what what they love doing um how they spend their time oh there's 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 so much stuff and I've I've got it all you know there's actual processes you can go through but the more you can understand about them the more you can understand what's going to motivate them so that in itself will direct your tone of voice um but you've always got to be speaking to them like it's always about you have to put them first. It's not what you want to tell them. It's about understanding what, how they feel, how it's going to benefit them, how it's going to make them feel better. So it's all about feel. Do you know what I mean? It's not about selling clothes. It's about how do I make you feel? With the clothes on and what it makes them. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. yeah and, and sometimes they will just become extremely loyal to you because look, they might buy off you rather than someone else that has a similar product because of how you make them feel that creates the loyalty do you know what I mean that creates the reason to purchase because they like you you make them feel good so you can't get hung up about the product yeah that, you, you know one thing Tam when I started my business and it's grown really really slowly and I think uh, what I did is I never worried about the money. I just knew it would come and I have always reinvested, reinvested, reinvested. And to the point that I pay some people that work for me more than I pay myself because, <laughs> because I know that that is actually the thing that's going to create create the wealth, like investing in good people. So it's it's always got to be about not selling and making money if that's why you're in business it's probably not going to last that long or you're going to be so attached to the outcome or the money you're going to miss everything else and it's not going to grow a sustainable beautiful business that's going to attract the right customers the right team all of that sort of thing so I think whether you're selling a service or a product or whatever it is, you've got to understand who you are, why you do it and how you're going to affect and serve others. And then I think the rest, for me, it just comes. Yeah, for me, that's keeping the eye on the prize. I love that you've said that, babe. Um, I've recently invested in a personal assistant for my business and Ooh, huge love it. huge step in my in in, in this growth and I'm, I'm stretching myself and one of the things that really stood out on what you just said was I'll, I'll find a way you know money is something that always comes um but Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine those of you who are listening um, <laughs> I just like walked past <laughs> Yeah, husband. Sorry, guys. So good. Um, no, I mean, what the beautiful thing that you said, it, it isn't about the money for you. And that's why the money comes because you've always been focused on serving people. And the reason I'm bringing this up, uh, my beautiful um, assistant, Georgia, we were doing content creation here on Monday and we were just talking. She brought over a cake for my birthday. And I was, this sounds really um, a bit silly, but I was looking at her and I said to her, you know, I, cannot wait to bring you everywhere I go whenever I go to a business event when I go to you know different parts of the world to do speaking because I've never wanted it's never been about me it's always been about helping other people and I do this for my clients I do this for anyone that works with me mm -hmm. and I truly feel that coming back to values and the number one value has always been for me mm -hmm. family life and that's why what I do for my clients and anyone in my container, the more I focus on that value and speak to people in that manner of what a family life would want, I know I'm attracting soul people into my life. Coming back to what you said prior, I was so focused on just the outcome of the money mm. that the money came, but then I nearly fucked things up because yeah. the love wasn't there. The yeah. purpose wasn't there. Mm. And I feel from businesses and anyone listening who are you know really wanting to build and scale really focus on your purpose and why like is it really just for the money or is it for the greater good to serve and help others and very much like what Lou says and we're going to touch a little bit on this with leadership you know it's understanding the client's values that's really going to create that connection and feel to bring people in um yeah but yeah I um wanted to bring this up because you were saying to me before, before we started the call, you do this little ritual or sort of like a morning intentions with your, with your team. So talk to me about like, you know, how your team is, what are the things you guys have been doing together? What makes a team a team? Because I want to build a team. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So I, I love that. And I love that you spoke about your values because I think it all starts with getting very, very clear on your values. Like um, 
we have a set of business values and every one of them are derived from our team's personal values. So we will go through and do an exercise where we, we you know, narrow down what are our five top values personally, and then we create our business values from there. So what that does is everyone's got their DNA in it. So they really, they really buy into it and they feel it and they believe in it because we've created it. Um, so I think that's one of the most important things to do. Um, every time our team expands, we redo the values exercise and we battle test them pretty much every year. Um, and they've evolved and grown since then, but to a point now that they've remained quite consistent for so long, they are they're how we operate. They are our true north. When things go bad and things in businesses do go bad, it has its challenges. If you are really clear on your values and what they represent to you, when things turn to shit, turn to them and they refocus you, they get you out of maybe that fight flight sort of mode and that like, you know, that can happen in business sometimes. And they, they really do recenter you. And as I suppose in my position is in the business where, you know, I'm, I'm the director of the business. If I'm good and if I refocus on them, the team is good, you know, and it settles everyone and it refocuses everyone. So, um, and that, not only that, they drive decisions we make. They drive decisions we make when it comes to expanding our team and hiring new staff, but also very much around the clients that we choose to work with. So um, one thing that I'm fiercely protective of is my team. And so I won't work with clients that aren't aligned with our values. So it doesn't mean we go out and say, oh, do you value integrity? This, this, this. It's more a feeling you get. Mm. And you or we almost interview new clients before we make a decision about whether they come on board or not. And occasionally we make a mistake and um, I rectify that mistake very quickly. And I've, over my lifetime, even when I wasn't making any money, um, let clients go because they were just not a fit and they were just awful to work with, essentially. And it wasn't that they were bad people. They just had really different values and... Um, weren't very respectful and it's like I don't want to be treated like that so I'm certainly not going to let any of my team be treated like that it just it's like just a line in the sand thing for me yeah and we love our clients we're a ball with them I think um if that's a true leader right it's it's mm -hmm. uh, you know being able to say no it's being able to you know there's a there's a there's a <clears throat> there's a level of obviously prioritizing ourselves but you've just said your team is kind of more number one and you focus on them so that you're good as well or also you prioritize yourself so that they're good but mm. actually you're not just thinking for yourself you think you're thinking for everyone in your vicinity yeah um, huge uh, do you know uh, for me you just have to have a people first mentality like your team has to feel safe and there's my husband again. <laughs> Hello. The, the, the most important thing is that your team feels safe. Yeah. And what, what they give back when they do is just, I can't even begin to talk to you about how proud I am of the people that work within Kick. Like they are the most trustworthy, dedicated, soul felt people you could ever imagine everyone's got each other's back and it doesn't matter what they do whether they're in the creative department or the account management sort of side of the business everyone supports each other like you know this week has been pretty pretty intense with one of our clients and the amount of work we've got to do so rather than let the creative director just drown in work our account manager has been a Nazi about prioritising work and knowing what he's capable of doing without, you know, breaking and letting the client know what we'll do and getting them to be responsible for what work they want done first. And 
they just do that for each other. I never ever have to think about what they're doing or how they're doing it. Like it's just the most incredible space to be in as I suppose the boss of a company is just have absolute trust and faith that they're looking after business and they are. And I think if you look after your people, you never have to worry about your clients because they will always look after them and they do. Anyone um, that is listening in terms of going into that next step of mm. building a team, which has been for me, mm. how do you know when you're at that level? And, you know, do you, you know, add or hire more people every year or is it every three months? And how do you go about it? You know, like you would have gone through this as mm. well where you kind of gone, fuck, I better now uh, look at hiring. I'm like yeah. at a wit's end. Yeah. Do you know what? It, that That's a really hard one and I've made mistakes along the way. And when you are small and money's tight, but your sort of business is getting bigger and it's like it's bulging and you know you have to do something, I think that... Sometimes you just have to be really brave and you really have to trust that what you've done is enough to support the growth of the business. And sometimes you just have to create create space for growth. So sometimes you just have to put your own fears aside um, and your concerns around that and go, no, I've got this. And, and be in that place where it's already happened. So something that... Um, the biggest thing I've noticed since I've done a huge amount of, of this personal work mm. and, and my own growth is I behave differently within, I suppose, the business and that fear mindset is gone mm. and it's opened up a space for us to get much clearer about who we are about a business and what we put out there, whether it be on social media or blogs or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, now that I've gotten out of my own way a bit, we're actually attracting a much, much better quality of um, like talent, so to speak. Um, and, you know, I'm really clear about, I communicate about, you know, company culture and leadership and values and, you know, that's going to resonate with some people and it's going to turn some people off. And that's really, really cool because then those people aren't going to come knocking. And the people that do come knocking, because I'm so clear about who we are, they are people that are already sort of aligned with what we do. So, um, but with that quality of person also comes the quality of income. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Now I just go, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's not it's not ridiculous because they deserve that. They've done the hard work. They're bringing experience and amazing stuff to our business that we haven't had access to before, if that makes sense. So I think it's a bit of a mindset mm -hmm. and I think it's about getting out of your own way or understanding where the fear might come from um, about scaling. Um, and I think once you address that, it gets, it's quite organic. Yeah. You know, all the books that I've been reading. I'm not sure if I covered that. No, you did. At all, but yeah. You did. Because basically in, in regards to that, it's just trusting your gut and yeah, where there's a, there's a level of like, you just make a way out of no way you know, and when I stepped into hiring, you know, I asked Georgia, like, you know, what, what do you feel you're worth? Yeah. Because I was deciding what I was going to pay. Really cool. Yeah. And she, and it was a bit of a test as well. Yeah. <laughs> she passed, but she said, you know, she ranked herself nice and high. Mm. Um, you know, I set, I set a figure mm. and I said, you know, where do you feel this? And she goes, I know I'm going to be able to deliver you. And I, I truly believe this is where I'm at. And it was the highest one. I said, great, I'm going to give you that. And that was a test to see what you feel and believe about yourself. And 
was a really interesting and that's cool I love that yeah and I was like well I better fucking make this work (laughs) yeah um and this is what I was you know getting at every book that I'm reading every person that I'm speaking there's this level of like when you're so committed to your business to Mm -hmm. anything you know you'll just make it work yeah it's in every person, every conversation, mm-hmm. and they don't even second guess money. They will just go, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you've just, you know, really, again, solidified that belief in myself. And if you listen to any of my episodes, babe, this brings conversation up to all of my listeners mm-hmm. that when you truly invest and just do it without hesitation, it comes back to you. Yeah. It really does. And you align yourself with, you know, the team you want, the clients you want, you know, the, the people you want to work with, you know, every, the energy just becomes so electric because you're not chasing the money. You're yeah. just knowing that the, the energy of money is going to be there. Yeah, absolutely. And do you know one other thing too that when it, when it comes down to money is it's not about just like, oh, it'll be there, airy-fairy. It's not that. You have to have absolute responsibility around money and what you're doing with it and what you choose and your relationship with it. Um, and, you know, that's a journey I've been on as well. And, you know, there's a place I wanted to get, get to in my business and that was no matter what happens that I'm safe for six months. And it's not going to affect my team. I'm not going to have to lay anyone. I wanted that bankroll there. And so it's about, you know, reinvesting and being smart with your money and not having stupid overheads and and investing it wisely, like in your good team and in your good talent. And, um, you know, I got to that place. And... um, Are you getting distracted by your husband? I'm so distracted by you. No, you, know, <laughs> you know, this is recorded and filmed. I'm so sorry. So this, this all had to be on the bloopers. So I'm living in this tiny little cottage because we're getting our house rebuilt. So he's trying to come and make coffee and I'm telling him to go away. So sorry, everyone. Babe, I only add a snippet of a video in. Oh, God. <laughs> Which I really want to make it this one because it's so fucking hilarious. <laughs> this goes to show everyone this is not planned. There is absolutely like, you know, authentic. There is a lot of authenticity here. Yes. We're kind of winging it, right? Clearly, clearly, we're showing the authenticity today. <laughs> so I couldn't even pronounce your name. I was like, yeah, again. <laughs> but anyway, around that money thing, yeah, it's like. You have to you have to be smart. You've got to reinvest in your business. You've got to know your figures. You have to be on top of it. Like I it was it was my worst thing was around money and just I don't like figures and all of that. Well, I've learned to love them. Oh. And the more I've learned to love and embrace them and be really clear about what's coming in, what's going out, all of that sort of thing. And having that structure around it, well, now it's it's no problem. I know what I need. I can put other things in place that give me a whole lot of freedom around the finances of the business, like lots of processes in place to know what I need to bring in every month, like what someone's going to cost me, what I need their billable hours to be to cover them, to grow the business and all of that. So it just helps you make better decisions. I mean, now understanding all of this right because you and I are both very focused on flow Mm. people need to understand yes there needs to be strategies in the business where do you feel the strategies work really well where our masculine energy is and where do you find the feminine energy becomes really really you know yeah all right (laughs) well yeah I suppose even that's you know from for the setup of a business yeah I think you know you're masculine there's got to be there's got to be discipline um around you know finances processes in the business um uh, all of that sort of thing that just actually that's the stuff that gives you the freedom around business and it's funny because (laughs) there's a guy in my business and he is the process king and I let him run with it and we just support him and go yep you go (laughs) 
<clears throat> yeah, thank God. I've just got some some great people that have got you know talents outside of what their actual job description are. So I suppose um being just taking responsibility for what your business looks like on a day-to-day -day basis that's going to make it run easier. Um, so what your processes are around and your planning are around finances. Um, I mean, even simple things like, <clears throat> you know, the way you you file your documents, like um, uh, I suppose like the the apps you use to help you manage your workflow and that type of thing, you know, all of that, you've got to have all of that stuff in place. But where I think the feminine comes in is is the leadership part for me anyway and creating that beautiful culture and space for people to grow. And, you know, I suppose it's even selfish in a way, isn't it, because I'm surrounding people with you know that I feel so aligned with because you know you everyone gets something out of helping someone else mm -hmm. it's a two-way street isn't it like they feel good you feel good um so for me that's the feminine side of the business is creating this um beautiful space that's that's not work it's a place you come to is part of your life if that makes sense yeah yeah, so that that to me is that's the nurturing side. That's that's the love. Like my um, my purpose in life, what I've come really clear about is to awaken love. And it's like, well, how in the hell does that reflect in business? But it does because it doesn't matter what you do. I think the antidote to even human evolution is that love piece. And if you can have an impact in business around love and freedom and <clears throat> that that just creates a space for people to take that home with them doesn't it and impact the people that are in their life and you know I, I said before we started recording um one of the girls that is part of our team lives in the Philippines and every every morning we reflect on an, one of our business values, um, a gratitude and, and an intention for the day. And just out of nowhere this morning, she just burst into tears and said her gratitude is for us and the team. And she feels so much a part of our team. And she's gone through some really tough stuff in the last 12 months and how we've helped her heal. Like, oh, it's like my work here is done. I was just, that was the biggest thank you anyone could give me to know that she feels like that in a space that, yeah, that I've helped create. I mean, that's what our team's like, is this, this openness and this safety and this space where people can express themselves. And I think that's why I don't have to worry about what they do. They just get the job done. So beautiful, babe. It's yes, that's the feminine, isn't it? <laughs> Pardon? That's the feminine. I know. <laughs> it's beautiful, but you've got the balance of both. And mm. that's, the, that's the key to not just a successful business, but relationship and everything. And, and you know what, Tam, that took a while. That it didn't, it's, you know, I've been doing it for 10 years. And it did take a while um, and there was too much of, you know, the masculine sometimes and too much of the feminine and being able to, like, make a whole lot of mistakes along the way, which, you know, they're there to teach us, so I'm really cool with that. But, yeah, that's sort of where we are now. Just make, makes me feel, just makes me feel so brave and that I've got this and like when you say about you know employing people and when do you do it now I'm just like oh well I'll, I'll just know when the right people will come and the business will dictate that yeah. and we'll be ready whenever it comes oh wow I feel like reflecting now too I could sense when it was it was time to do it yeah yeah biggest piece too right I think it's trusting yourself that 
that that sort of feeling that you get where you're like, oh, that that someone's telling me I need to do something here. Yeah. <laughs> and you and what you're doing and your growth and is just beautiful. I, I, like for me, it feels it feels like you're on just the precipice of something huge. Like you do so much of your own work, and you, anyway, I'm pretty happy to be surrounded by. I love you. I yeah. like you. It's just, it's nice to hear that. And I, I sometimes it's, I forget like yeah. where I've come from, where I am, where I'm going, and it's just really nice to hear. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. do you know? Do you know another thing? You have to celebrate your wins. Yes, you have to stop and celebrate where you've come from and what you're doing and reflect. It's huge. We do it every Monday. We just, as a team, reflect on a win from the week before. And it stops you being on that, you know, merry-go-round. We just go and go and go and try and achieve and we're doing more. And what's like, no, stop. Smell roses. When you say every Monday you do that, do you have like a time and and place where you sit down um, or you get everyone to send it in a text or yeah yeah so do you know when when we all had to go home from COVID and work remotely one thing I put in place and I suppose this is more around the structure and this has been the glue that has actually helped the business grow and thrive through what was a pretty you know murky time um at 9am every single morning we meet whether it's online or we've got an office now and some days we're in there wherever we are but we all meet at 9 a.m and I am non-negotiable about it and I have been and um every day hey every day every Monday to Friday wow that's every day yeah because it's kept us connected yeah and so what we do every and we go through a process like yes we'll talk about whatever we need to as a group as far as work but every single morning we reflect on a, one of our values, whatever, you know, resonates with us on the day. So that way the whole team is constantly reflecting on values. Um, so it becomes really ingrained in who you are and who you be, you know, and it drives, it drives, um, it drives decisions and um, and sometimes it brings people back online. Like health is one of our top values. And it's like we look after ourselves and others. Mm. And, um, you know, sometimes if they're not well, they reflect on health. Or even if they are well, they'll reflect on and go, I'm so grateful that this is how I feel. And I need to keep myself, you know, in a healthy state so I can be of service to my family and to the team at work. And, you know, it's just that that sort of thing and we also do a gratitude whatever it is it's and this was just so important through COVID where everyone and like most of my team are in Melbourne and it was um it was tough down here and um keeping just that mindset around yeah it's tough but there's always something good yeah, and then setting an intention for that the day just to, to make them conscious and this this practice um is now something everyone looks forward to and we love it and we you know and it, it's not hard everyone's just like yeah and they're ready and yeah and, and it's been it was the glue that held us together and it gives them an opportunity to share about some gorgeous stuff that's going on in their life I love that baby mm. I'm actually gonna have to steal that with um my team and my I'll do it <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing especially if you're remote as well and it really helps you connect and it but it also gives you a real opportunity to to support because sometimes there's some crappy stuff going on in people's lives and it creates a space for them to be able to talk about it yeah babe. that's amazing yeah my love how I always end the episode is I ask my beautiful guests on what slay means to them. Slay. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> to me, that the first thing that comes up in my mind is when you just smash something, when you've done it so well, you've slayed it. 
Yeah, that's what it's, it's. I think it's a great word. Thanks, babe. Oh, that was great. Smashing shit. I, I'd love to see you do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, my beautiful girl. Where can everyone find you on on social media, or even learn more about your business? Yeah, so um, the business is called Pick and Co. So we've got a website. We're on Instagram, on Facebook. So yeah, just head over pickandco.com.au. You'll find everything there and links. Thank you so much, my love. Oh, and thank I you. Cannot wait to see where your incredible company goes. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> love you. Love you.